Podtacular, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast presents episode 673, Halo MCC Pizza Edition, recorded live on March 14th, 2019. Hello everyone, welcome to Podtacular, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast. I am your host, Dust Storm. And I am your co-host, Godzilla T. And we are on the heels of a big announcement from this past week, which we'll get to in just a minute. I know. The Halo keys. Universe has frozen over. Or it's eating a lot of pizza. One of the two. Lots of pizza. <laughs> oh. Uh, we have a special guest with us tonight, all the way over from Team Respawn. Uh, welcome, Andrew, to the podcast. Hi, how are you? Doing well. Thanks for jumping on the show tonight. Yeah, thanks for letting me uh, come on. Yeah, it's uh, been quite a long time coming, I think, ever since we, uh, I think for us over here at the Podtacular side, since we heard about the Halo Wars Championship League Season 2. Yes. That got a lot of traction, so it was, it's cool to see, even though Halo Wars isn't a kind of formal esports in the kind of grander esports realm it's cool to see that there's still a community out there that's willing to put through the effort of making it competitive yeah so it's it's not a huge game by any means but it definitely has its its hardcore loving fan base just like any halo game does um and we're just really fortunate to be part of it very nice so one of the couple of questions we ask our new host or co-host or guest host, I guess, of the show um, is, firstly, how did you get into Halo? And then, secondly, what do you do within the Halo community now? So, how I got into Halo, I think I just became a fan of it from playing it at LAN parties in the Halo 1, Halo 2 days on original Xboxes. Um, I don't really remember playing Halo for the first time. I just remember enjoying it as a kid. Um, And then, when the 360 came out, um, that's when I picked up Halo 1 and Halo 2 on my own. And from then on, I was hooked. Um, as, as a kid growing up, my very first game was Age of Empires, uh, made by Ensemble Studios. And when I found out that they were making a Halo game, which would turn out to be Halo Wars, um, that was really when I dove into it. So Halo Wars was really the game that got me hooked in the franchise. Um, and I've just really loved it since then. For, for what I do in the Halo community, um, in college, I had too much free time, so I decided with a couple of buddies... Didn't we all? <laughs> I decided with a couple of buddies that we would um, just record us playing games and post it on YouTube. And we did that for a couple of years, and no one cared. And then uh, one of my friends said, hey, um, Halo Wars was backwards compatible on the Xbox One. Do you want to give it a shot? And I said, yeah. And we started posting some videos, and it it really got a lot of traction. So we decided, you know, we love Halo Wars so much. And that was the only game we really loved to record that we just went on from there. And so we just love having a blast playing Halo Wars and really making fools of it ourselves doing it along the way. And we like to do things like Halo tournaments uh, for Halo Wars um, and really help new players get to learn the game. Cool. Yeah, and it's been really cool to, again to see the Halo Wars Championship League really take off and be a thing that is officially recognized by 343 and getting promotion for it. So it's cool to, to really see the community get behind it and really support it. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Um, it's really interesting because each individual Halo Wars community can host their own tournaments. And then they're awarded points. The participants who, how they fare in that tournament will be awarded points to an overall um, bracket. And then once the season wraps up, there'll be an invitational with prizes from 343. And then the if you win the entire season, if you become the grand champion, you actually get to have something requested for a balance change put into Halo Wars 2, actually. That's a pretty nice gig. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So someone, if someone wins the whole thing, um, I, I don't know if there's any rules on what you can say, but uh, of what balance change you want. But so far, they've been pretty good balance changes. As long as we don't get the happening again. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fun weekend. 
It, it it definitely was interesting to see a lot of the craziness that came out of it. I mean, overall, it was fun. So that that's the important part. Yep. So we'll talk a little bit more with Andrew about the Halo Wars Championship League and Halo Wars content a little bit later. But I think I've kept everyone hanging on the edge of their seats long enough. But if you haven't heard by now, MCC is coming to PC. They finally made the announcement and it's finally good to talk about because I've known about it since September. <laughs> so it is rub it in dust. <laughs> it's, just, it's just one of those other community day things. It's like, well, you know, you could just three. skip that part of the conversation. <laughs> it's been really, I've been like, what can I say? What can I say? I really happy for this. But no, so did they tell you ahead of time, or did you just stumble upon it? Or can you even say? Uh, I can't really get into those details. I can just say I knew about it. But yeah, yeah, we we were that way with um with the Fort Jordan, the new map in Halo Wars Two. Yeah, it's one of those things where the studio entrusts you with certain things and entrusts you to not talk about it and. For, for certain members of the, of the community, if you've really given back and have a chance to get invited out to things like that or, or have a significant role in the community like you guys do with Halo Wars, then they, they throw you a bone every now and then. Yeah. It's like, here, here's a little nugget. You just, you just can't talk about it. Yeah, we were really fortunate for, for the new Halo Wars 2 map to be able to have our content done and ready to go for when the announcement came out. So, but yeah, the MCC news is is much bigger and more important than the, the Halo Wars 2 map. No, for sure. And one of the things that the community has been asking for a really long time as well. They've been asking for it since Halo 3 launched. Yeah. In a roundabout way. Yeah. Of course, at the time it was we want Halo 3 on PC. So, yeah, it's uh it's good that it's finally there. It will be interesting to see what changes are made to the game for PC. Well, and they've done a lot to make it work with Xbox One as it is, but there's the added some like uh, PC complexities with mm -hmm. native PC games. So on the Xbox Insiders or Inside Xbox stream on Tuesday where they announced this, one of the things that Sketch talked about was making sure there's FOV sliders in there, key rebindings, keyboard and mouse support, and making sure that all the stuff that you would expect from a modern first-person shooter on PC is included. Mm -hmm. and, and making sure that they're doing it right. Yeah, and you know, they've got a couple of really good companies involved in helping them do that. Yeah, so they've got two studios that they're working with, um, with a a little bit of history behind them. Splash Damage, who helped produce Gears of War 4, Dirty Bomb, and Gears of War Ultimate Edition. So, Gears of War Ultimate Edition being another one of those kind of collection of games type of things. It's a pretty good partner to go with. And then Ruffian, who are behind Fragmental, which is a game I hadn't heard of before, and Crackdown 2. Yeah. So, some pretty good partners to work in uh, with trying to make this a reality on PC. And there's probably been some other help from the, the community as well, especially the folks behind El Dorito and probably some other community modders out there. I'm sure who have had their hand in this. Well, probably. you know, ever since they had that takedown for Halo Online, they said in that Waypoint blog post that they hear you loud and clear that people want classic Halo on PC and they're going to explore options to give it to them. Or that was somewhere along the verbiage that they wrote. and. So I figured at that point, just the response that the community had to uh, El Dorado when it came out, that this was not far away. And I'm, I'm finally glad that, that it is here. Yeah, I think for everyone who plays PC games and gets Xbox pretty much specifically for Halo because they love the Halo franchise, this is a huge win. And just from a, a shooter perspective... I mean, it, it, it'll be interesting to see how much traction Halo will get on PC after this starts releasing on PC. But if they can see that population spike in PC to be fruitful and prove like they made a good decision on it, I, I hope it's there. 
I yeah. was there for them. Well, with them releasing it on Steam as well as the Windows Store, I think it's going to do really well, especially on Steam. Because Steam already has a huge player base. And I know there's people there that play Halo, that, you know, play Steam games. So that that will be that will be uh interesting to watch the steam side of it and you know the microsoft store stuff and eh, whatever but it'll be really interesting to see what sales go like on steam because that can influence future titles yeah certainly i'm i'm honestly a little surprised that they went the steam route i mean good on them to realize that there's a lot more community PC gaming community on Steam than there is the Windows Store and how I mean I personally don't have an issue with the Windows Store it it works for what it needs to be needs to work for me um and I don't mind having kind of that Windows Store for my Microsoft titles separate from Steam but there's a lot of other PC gamers out there that have invested in Steam and want everything within that interface. So it's nice to have that 343 recognizes that there's going to be a lot of PC players that want to do it through Steam. And it just shows they're taking the extra mile to make sure that the PC fans are catered to appropriately. And they didn't have to do that. They didn't have to put it on Steam. They, They could have just put it on Windows Store and said, here you go. But they, you know, they have done other Microsoft games on Steam in the past occasionally, like Age of Empires 2, that remaster, uh, Age of Empires 2 HD is only on Steam, and same with the Age of Mythology remaster. And Didn't they put Halo Wars on Steam? Yeah, Halo Wars 1 is on Steam. It's Definitive the Definitive Edition. Edition. Yep. yep. And it has a pretty substantial modding community just because it's on Steam. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. So yeah, is there so a mod... Is there a mod kit for it, or is it just people actually going in and actually hard modding it? For Halo Wars? Yeah. Um, from what I understand, it, it's it's people just going through and changing scripts. Okay. To change the behavior of it. And, I mean, they even re-added Black and Finn is one of the guys over on... He's pretty friendly with Team Respawn. He actually added a, a new faction to add the Flood into Halo Wars 1. So there's now three factions if you use one of his mods. And there's there's like a whole Discord server just for the modding community for Halo Wars. Um, there's some people who are really hardcore into it. Wow, that's... You know, I, I always feel like I try to get a good thumb on community projects that are going on, and then I hear of three more, like, every <laughs> month. And it's like, really? Yeah. I can't yeah. keep track of everything. I know we're trying to... We're, one of the things I'm trying to do a lot better for the podcast this year is really take a more commanding view of the community since we're still kind of, I mean, we're getting a lot of Halo news, Halo news now because it's lead up to Outpost Discovery, lead up to Infinite, and now we got MCC coming to PC, so there's plenty of news to talk about, but one of the things that we I've realized... We thought there were going to be a drought. <laughs> well, I, I just, I look back at 2018 and all the podcasts we did, and we really didn't do the community justice when the podcast has always, or since its inception, has been about trying to focus on community aspects of the the franchise. So I'm I'm trying to do due diligence there, but there's just a lot to cover. We may st- may have to start grouping the updates. We we might have to you know give all the updates for this, you know, these four and then the next week we do the next four and five <laughs> what, or whatever it is. Or what I might need to do is is start pulling in some community support. It's like, hey, can you do like a 10 minute segment on this group? And hey, can you do a two, 10 minute segment on this group? And we'll just add them in there and then we'll we'll talk about them <laughs> afterwards. Because <laughs> there's just I mean, it's great stuff, but yeah, we just but I guess that's not a bad idea. Maybe like focus on certain projects in a month. Group well, you know, that's not a bad idea. Was it uh, Downfall is basically doing monthly updates now, right? Yeah. You know, we can do, we can do the same thing for the rest of them. Just group all the updates into one spiel. Yeah, do like a handful one week and then a handful next week. And then we just rotate them in every week or something like that. So we have four different. Welcome to month. the Podtacular planning, planning session. Planning committee. <laughs> yeah. 
Exactly. We're just going to skip the interview for today and just do planning. <laughs> the one yeah, thing that idea. don't get me wrong. I am really happy that MCC is coming to PC. Uh, I've been looking forward, forward to it for a long time. Uh, because not necessarily for multiplayer. I like to take my laptop with me whenever I travel and that'll give me a way to fart around in Halo, you know, when I have downtime, you know, because the games that I have, you know, don't get me wrong. I have several games on there that I play, but none of them captivate me like Halo does. And it would be nice to be able to do that. You know, if I got some downtime, I can just sit there and run through Reach's campaign or Halo One's campaign. Or well, if somebody gonna, wants to know what Halo is, I can fire up my laptop and show them. And another question to that too, which I haven't seen been going through the community as much, but I have seen it pop up. But system requirements and all of these games have run on three sixty or below, so I can't imagine that the system requirements for these games is going to be super high. Well, just keep in mind is Halo Two Anniversary. Yeah, that's true. But if you look at all the other games and we've like I have a Surface Pro, like an OG Surface Pro, and you can run Halo Wars on it. Granted you're not getting full graphics on it, but could you possibly run MCC games on something that is that low of hardware requirements? I think you're probably gonna need something more than that. I, I'm, I'm, yeah. You're gonna need I, I something agree. probably with a dedicated graphics cart, just because of the graphical side of the game. Because you know, yes, a 360 is low in hardware, especially by today's standards, but it still has a dedicated graphics GPU. Granted, it's part of the CPU, but it, it's there. You know, it's You know, the games are designed to run on district discrete graphics like running it on a, a surface pro <laughs> uh, yeah it'll probably argue with you <laughs> uh, there you know there are some games that, yeah you can run on some lightweight hardware like that uh like you could probably get halo ce uh or halo ce pc to run on a surface you could probably get Halo 2 Vista to run on a Surface. But if there was a true port of Halo 3 for PC, I would doubt you'd be able to get it to run on something like that. You'd probably need something a little bit more horsepower than one of those Surfaces. I'm going to try install, you know, I've got one installing El Dorito. I'll try installing El Dorito on my Surface and see if it runs. That ought to be interesting at your six frame rate. <laughs> <laughs> I think if they just have something like uh even if it's like a 1050 Ti as a baseline requirement I mean that the 10 series has been out for so long and especially if people are buying it on Steam most people who have who are Steam users will have a decent rig yeah, good enough to play. have it. a relatively up to date rig so I don't think that's going to be a problem. You know the only place where I really see that being a problem is people that buy it on the Windows Store. Well, and because you want your other gamers that are more casual gamers, because one of the nice things about the Xbox is, is, is you just have that and you go with it. You don't have to worry about custom hardware or any of that stuff. So, Well, that's where you play it on a console. You know, no, for, I, if yeah, you're that I get it, casual but for, of a gamer, you're not somebody that's going to be bringing it with you on a PC or be setting down at a PC to play video games. But if I could bring a laptop with me that has moderate graphics instead of an Xbox traveling wise. Yeah. For some people that might be an easier solution. You're not what I consider a casual gamer. No, I'm not specifically. I'm just saying hypothetically <laughs> yeah. for people that might be. Well, but maybe I'm, I'm hypothetically re- talking about an actual casual gamer. Okay. <laughs> Which, you know, I wouldn't categorize anybody, you know, in our group to be a true casual gamer. Not, I mean, not there's for me, people, the people that game that on Xbox because us. they don't have any other choice. <laughs> well, your wife might qualify, but she is married to you, so that might negate that, too. <laughs> Thanks. 
but I, I'm sh- sure it's going to run on a wide range of specs. You know, I've got a Dell lap- got laptop. It does have a mobile NVIDIA GPU in it. And, you know, I can run that other Bungie game on it. You know, I can run Halo Wars 2. I can run Halo Wars and they run just fine. I just have to run them at low graphics. And, you know, I'm not getting 60 or, you know, 144 hertz out of the monitor. Well, for one, it doesn't support it, but uh, the the hardware in the PC just won't, it won't run those kind of frame rates. You know, like in Destiny, if I get, you know, if I get into something with a lot of AI in it, it, it'll hit the FPS pretty hard and it'll have a noticeable lag to the screen, but it's still playable. Now, once the MCC comes out, I may have to update that. <laughs> Yep. Well, my my 4K monitor and 1080 Ti or GTX is ready for when it comes. Yeah, I mean, you know, my desktop it's it it won't have any problem running it. Uh, so a couple other pieces of the announcement which we haven't quite touched on yet. Halo Reach is coming to the MCC as well. I don't know if we touched on that quite yet or not, but no, we haven't. Because we hadn't. Uh, Halo Reach will be the first title that will come to PC, and the PC release will be coming out game by game, so you'll be able to buy it piecemeal through Steam and the Windows Store. Uh, They haven't said specifically if you have MCC on Xbox, if it'll be a true play anywhere. I didn't remember them saying play anywhere in the announcement, so I'm, I'm not sure... Yeah, I'm they sure your stats about will play will cross. anywhere in the announcement. Um, the you know the only thing they said was that the Halo Reach will be coming to the Xbox MCC. Uh, we will get Forge. We will get the multiplayer, um, and that's it. That is will be included in the MCC. If you want Firefight and the campaign they're going to charge you for the upgrade. We don't know what the pricing is going to be. It could be five bucks. It could be 25 bucks. Who knows? I imagine it'll probably be relatively inexpensive. I'm guessing probably 10, 15 bucks. Like I said, it, it'll be relatively inexpensive. And when they first announced it, I was kind of miffed because of certain other games practices when it comes to DLC and, you know, the whole debate about DLC that has just been raging for the last, what, year and a half. Seems like it's been longer than that. Well, I mean, it's just really picked up in the last year and a half, it seems like. But then I got to thinking about it. They literally had to hire two companies to help them do this. So they're expelling a lot of cash to do this. So if you would have to buy the MCC on the Windows Store, I think, you know, I wouldn't be happy about it, but I can kind of understand it depending on what they charge for it. Sure. No, I agree. I think it's oh great. The spotlight just got released seven minutes ago. Great. Um I think it's one of those things if we see the cost on the Windows Store will probably get a lot of people complaining about it because they've already bought it from digitally, but it it, it kind of makes sense. Like you, like yeah, you and they may do, you know, they may make it play anywhere, just like a lot of the other games. But if you want Reach, you still have to buy it. Right. Who we knows? will. We will see. We'll see what happens. We also have. Game Pass to include campaign and firefight. So if you're a Game Pass subscriber, you will get that pieces, those pieces of reach included with your MCC experience on Xbox. And PC options that they're looking at are things like FOV sliders, keyboard and mouse support, rebinding keys, all that kind of stuff. They did mention in the post that they have on the announcement that they're looking at flighting programs and how they're going to get the community involved. And there'll be more information about that during the South by Southwest Halo Invitational on Sunday. So overall, some pretty big news for MCC. Everyone was speculating it, and there was apparently someone on Reddit who 
said I will give a pizza to anyone who can tell me that or that says that MCC is coming to PC. And apparently Sketch went over there and said, what what flavor of pizza are we talking about? And then he went to Twitter and posted a tweet that had one pizza emoji in it and it blew up. Can't imagine why. <laughs> no, of course not. And then they ended up bringing pizza to the inside Xbox set to make the announcement. And then people sent pizza 2343 after the announcement. And I think there were probably upwards of 100 tweets from 343 staff tweeting out pizza that they were receiving. And it even got to a point where Game Informer wrote, Game Informer wrote an article about 343 wants people to stop sending them pizza. <laughs> Slow news day, huh? I I guess. <laughs> so essentially, after about I guess three hours or so after they made the announcement and everyone got back to the office, Sketch said, "Stop sending pizzas because the receptionist is not the receptionist isn't here and coordinating getting the pizza through the door is being is kind of hectic." So thank you, but stop. <laughs> Well, it's probably also to the point where what the hell are we going to do with all this pizza? Yeah, there there was probably a lot of extra pizza. I, 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 <laughs> I can't even imagine how many pizzas showed up there. Well, I'm guessing they probably went upstairs to some of the other Microsoft stuff because they, they also have Minecraft in the same building. And I think one other one other, one other first party title developer in the same building so they probably went up and shared the pizza with some of the other team yeah uh, i'm sure they did can you imagine being the pizza stores in the area someone put yeah, out I'd a like tweet. to place an order for a delivery where Not for three industries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we just left there <laughs> bob hang on we got another one to throw on the pile <laughs> Those poor pizza drivers, too. They probably went to the same place five, six times that day. And probably didn't get any tips. <laughs> That's so true. I'm sure some, some of the community folks who ever bought the pizzas probably tipped them. Make sure you tip your pizza delivery driver. Yes. So next time he won't spit on it. Oh. Um. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, so having all of that those pizzas was... And just seeing all the tweets come in was really funny. But so, uh, so Haas posted a tweet. Uh, for those who don't know who Haas is, he used to be a co-host and our community manager. But he, he, I don't know if this was his tweet originally, but he said, pizza companies in Seattle see a 34.3% increase in sales on Tuesday. And there, and there was another one that said, what's going on? It's like, sir, it's the Halo community. <laughs> I'm wondering how many of those pizza places that ended up delivering the pizzas knew of the announcement or they were, were tracking the announcement or any of the drivers would be like, Hey, cool announcement <laughs> or something like that. I'm assuming there was one or two at least. Well, yeah, the odds are there's at least, at least one or two halo fans there. Yeah, Somewhere. I say there would have to be. It's funny. Uh, this will be my last tangent for now, but um, there was a technical exchange at work. Uh, this week and I was supposed to brief but apparently they ended up they ended early and I didn't have to brief but when I was in there the previous day one of the guys said nice halo lanyard <laughs> like yay representing because I have my halo 5 lanyard that I have for my ID so I, I wear that everywhere ah between that Not and a potacular the, lanyard huh I figure more people know halo than potacular <laughs> so and I have my UNSC jacket that I wear so that that also gets a couple of nods. I've I've had I I've had some people point at me when I wear my Pontacular shirt. Really? Yeah. I might have to give that a try. That reminds Actually, me, I need to get with you and get a couple more of those ordered up. And that also reminds me, I should probably make a special shirt for this year. Again, back to the Pontacular planning committee. <laughs> Anyways, okay, back on the news. <clears throat> I think that covers most of the announcement. Did I miss anything? Those are the important announcements. Okay. Pizza, PC, and Halo Reach. Reach. Yeah. Reaching for MC Pizza. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so do you guys uh, think that Reach will be getting the 
remastered treatment that Halo 2 and Halo 1 got, or do you think it's going to be more like how the ODST treatment? Um, It'll be like the way they've been talking. It sounds like the the same thing they did with uh, ODST and Halo 3. Yeah, just uh, you know, update the graphics to be available in 4K. Right. Yeah, it's not a remaster. They're just doing the the 4K 60 frames upgrade and getting rid of motion blur. Right. You know, honestly, yep. it, with anything really past Halo 2, I don't think it really needs a graphical update like they did with Halo 2 or, or CE because they, the games still look good. That's probably why we never got a, a Halo 3 anniversary, to be honest. You know, it just didn't need I, it. I don't think it's needed. Right. Yeah, I, I don't think it. I mean, yeah, all the stuff in Halo 2 looks nice and shiny, but Halo th- Halo 3 still looks great. You know, honestly, whenever I'm playing Halo 2, I still play in old graphics. And there's nothing wrong with that. They're they're and if you play it in Halo 2 Vista and that kind of stuff, it, it's great. I mean, I I like it's Halo 3 is, has a little bit more of that crispness to it than Halo 2 does. Halo 2 I feel has a little more of that kind of gritty vibe to it. But it it's still it still works. Well, you know, it's don't get me wrong. Halo two anniversary looks great. It looks absolutely awesome. And I love uh, when it comes to cutscenes, it's anniversary cutscenes. Oh, blur. Every such time a great job with those. But when it comes to gameplay, it just, I don't know. It, it the brightness of the, the updated graphics just feels wrong. You everything's these vivid colors and it just it just doesn't feel like Halo 2. Not to mention the sounds. I, I don't know. I still don't <laughs> like the way some of the weapons and vehicles sound in the anniversary, but you know, it's yeah, just different visually it just I don't know. I I I enjoy it more in the old graphics. But I'm weird, so well, no, you make a good point because it has a different atmosphere about it in the old graphics and the new graphics. I think you're spot on with that. It's definitely a different experience as far as because the graphics and the lighting does pull different emotions from it. And I even get that running through Halo CE anniversary when I was doing it with with my wife, because there were some areas where it was a lot darker and grittier and foggy. Like if you go through 343 Guilty Spark in the, the swamp originally, it was supposed to be misty and musky. And then the yeah, anniversary, it's trip all... over your own feet. Right. And then the anniversary, it's, it's, wait, I can see where I am. I can see lights. I can, everything's clear. What? So no, you're, I think you're spot on that there is a atmospheric difference that does change the way you're experiencing the game. It doesn't break the game. It's just the experience is a little bit different than the traditional. No, does I think it trip the nostalgia bug? Sure. So the other article that we had planned, because apparently the spotlight's now out, and we'll see if we get to that. There's lots of cool community stuff again. We have the HCS Invitational Preview. This is for South by Southwest, so all the team is out there in Austin, Texas, for the six teams that have been invited to compete. There is schedules for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So as we're recording this on Thursday, by the time you're listening to this, the event is either midway through or it's over. But for Friday, we have 11.30 a.m. to 8 p.m. Central Time. During that stream, it will be the 4v4 Pro Tournament, winners rounds one and two. Uh, there will be the Microsoft Store 2v2 Throwdown on Friday. On Saturday, there will be a big team bonanza. And then the 4v4 Pro Tournament continues with the elimination rounds 1 and 2. And then we get the await- long-awaited Snipe Down versus Lethal Rivals showdown or show match. And then on Sunday, uh, it st- still starts at 11.30, but it will go till 5 p.m. or however late it needs to go. There will be the 4v4 Pro Tournament concluding with the winners and the eliminations finals and between the elimination final and the grand final, there will be additional MCC news that will be revealed. And then the grand finals will follow up for championship Sunday. 
Uh, brackets and more tournament information is over on the HTS Invitational Launch blog. You can also watch the stream on Mixer, Twitch, and YouTube. And for those that are in the area, they list the address of the venue. Uh, South by Southwest, I think, is kind of one of those open events. You just go and you can buy a ticket. I think it's I don't think it's one of those you actually necessarily have to buy a ticket in in advance. And then they also have a list of top stories to watch. So things like Real Two coming back to talks to uh, really get things going again. Some team changes around. Denial kind of making a name for themselves over the past few tournaments and seeing if they can actually disrupt some of the top teams over there. And then there's also going to be a Microsoft Store FFA tournament for 5000 in Halo 3. The tournament will take place at the Austin Convention Center during the three days of South by Southwest. Uh, qualifying players across Friday and Saturday will move with the winners to the finals on Sunday. So the... Um, the Microsoft Store tournament is again a two-player format. Or right, we'll have the uh, sorry, two oh uh, the finals will be eight players. There's two players coming from the Microsoft Store tournament that was on March 8th, and then there'll be three coming from South by Southwest on Friday and three coming from South by Southwest on Saturday. Each group of eight players will compete in three FFA matches on Heretic. Gosh, I hate that map. <laughs> <laughs> Um, based on placings in each game, each player is awarded points. First place receives eight points. Second place receives seven. Yada, yada, yada. At the end of the day, the three players with the highest point totals will move on to the finals on Sunday. Ties will be broken by in-game stats in the following order. Kills, assists, and deaths. So there you go. The Invitational at South by Southwest. And for those of us watching the live stream... I'll go ahead and post the update in here. We have the community spotlight, which got posted while we were recording. So we, again, didn't have a chance to go through and see all of that was in there. But as always, the community does not fail to produce. And we have lots of great community content. Screenshots, artwork, cosplay, a wedding with someone wearing a Master Chief helmet, which is pretty crazy. And a lot, lot more. Definitely recommend checking it out. Uh, there's some stuff inspired on uh, some of the recent MCC news. We've got some just routine screenshots. They have a little piece on the bottom. They call it Pizza Apocalypse with regards to Tuesday. And they did... Uh, mentioned the stream with they that they had with Heinz on Wednesday for the social stream. So Heinz is one of the latest additions to the competitive uh, team over at three four three. So we have we have that social stream to look forward to. And um, to kind of come back around to what you were saying, GT, uh, lots of pieces from Domino's, and they said our receptionist says it was the same Domino's delivery driver every time. <laughs> uh, yeah and apparently uh sam and rich uh heinz got a pizza delivery live on stream <laughs> yesterday too <laughs> and someone changed it up and said and wait for the pizza delivery boy right or person so we have also someone sent them brownies and someone eventually sent them a quiche and croissants Ooh, those look really good I kind of want pizza now. <laughs> it is pie day. I imagine that probably the reason it was Domino's is because they were the only ones that probably take a credit card. <laughs> <laughs> so there was in some of the tweets I saw Domino's, Little Caesars, and there was one other one. I think it's probably just like a local pizza place or something. But yeah, yeah. And you can in one of the pictures you can actually see one of the devs playing Halo Reach. On PC with a mouse and keyboard. Ah, I wonder what they were doing. Play testing. <laughs> I can help. Me, me, I can help. Well, tune in Sunday and you'll find out how you can help. Like how I made that transition there. <laughs> <laughs> I got a feeling somebody's already got some inside information again. 
I, I got nothing left. I'm not but gonna there's... say anything because I'm but... gonna do, I don't want to get in trouble. Yeah, that there's someone in the chat that has that. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure I know who it is too. Yep, I think we all do. <laughs> so def definitely go and check out the spotlight. Lots of really cool pieces of artwork. Again, the community is just crazy with what they come up with, and it's. Sometimes I wish I had talent like this, but if I did, then I wouldn't be able to appreciate all these other things as much. Keep working on the Halo community, because by gosh, you make Halo look pretty. Really pretty. All right, so that's it for the official Waypoint news that we have. We have an update to MCC yet again, thanks to Postums. So in this update, they added some more maps and modes uh, to the party and several social playlist offerings. So for Halo CE 4v4. In Zone Control, they've added Battle Creek, Hang'em High, and Wizard King of the Hill. For Asset Denial, they've added Wizard and Longest Oddball. For Halo 2 Ooh. Anniversary 4v4, they've added uh, in Flag and Bomb, Sanctuary Ricochet. It's been a while since we've seen Ricochet kind of make a spotlight appearance. For Halo 3 4v4 Slayer, they removed AR starts from Last Resort and Standoff. I think a lot of people can be happy about that. Added BR starts to Construct, Foundry, Snowbound, Standoff, Cold Storage, and Assembly. And reduced AR starts weights overall across all maps. For competitive games in the Halo 2 Team Hardcore, they have increased, increased objective weight relative to Slayer for each map. And that's the updates for MCC. So thanks, Postums, for that. Most definitely. On the Halo 5 front, we have a new playlist in town. It is Forerunner Slayer. So get in with your binary rifles, light rifles, suppressors, all that fun stuff. And uh, thank you, Misa. But So apparently there was a tweet and I missed it, so sorry. But there is double XP this weekend in Halo 5. Uh, not sure if it's uh, social only or... Foreigner Slayer only, or if it's across all the games. If someone can find that tweet, I can uh, read it out on the show. But yeah, that's happening as well. And I think that's all the official Halo news. We have a couple of community updates to get to before we uh, head on over to Andrew for our main discussion. Halo PDL Lore Thursday for this week, as soon as I can get it up in in my browser is Operation Spearbreaker. So, Operation Spearbreaker was a UNSC Spirit of Fire operation to stop banished forces led by Colony, capturing a Foreigner Despair class fighter. Which, if you haven't played the missions yet in Halo Wars 2, I highly recommend it. It's a great expanded campaign. For the Reddit community, in light of, of the recent news, they are restarting their community game nights. Their first one is going to be this Friday uh, on March 15th at 6 p.m. Central Time. And it is community choice as far as the uh, game. So it could be Halo 4, could be Halo 5, could be the Master Chief Collection, could be Customs, could be Matchmaking. You decide. So hell on over to the... I think they probably have a post over on the subreddit and probably in the Discord as well. So check them out for halo downfall we have a couple of updates from their subreddit as well first one is they're looking for audio engineers so if you have some audio background then please head on over to the subreddit and check it out uh, the next one they have is their first month month monthly monthly update and this one includes a couple of new concept art pieces. So we had them on the show a couple weeks ago for those who remember. And they mentioned that they are kind of taking a whole new direction with the game. And I have to say, I'm a lot more impressed with these concept art pieces than, <laughs> than before. So it's definitely starting to show. So good job on you guys. Because uh, it, it looks really pretty. And we actually have one of the uh, downfall guys back in the YouTube chat, so we're uh, we're spotlighting you a little bit, Westy. 
on your recent community uh, or monthly post. Uh, Warzone Assault and Double XP are so Foreigner Slayer and Warzone Assault have double XP for Halo Five this weekend. So I probably will will be jumping into some Warzone Assault and be using some of those legendary XP boosts. The 152 grind continues. Mm-hmm. Yay. So definitely head on over there. They have some concept art pieces for their new assault rifle. And they also have a couple of scenic art pieces as well. Um, one of an ODST spying out some brutes. And another one of a pelican leaving a dock over a cityscape. Very similar to New Mombasa. And uh, our podcast got shouted out in the update as well. Woohoo! Since they were over on the show uh, last week. So we have a couple of other positions they're looking for as well. 3D modeling, programming, audio engineers, and animators. So again, check them out on their subreddit. Reddit.com slash r slash Halo Downfall. Next community piece that we have is Puckett's Top 10 Plays of the Week are back. Uh, his fifth installment was released last week. So feel free to go on over and check that one out. And that's all the community content that we have for this week. So on to the Halo Wars 2, or Halo Wars discussion just in general. Uh, first thing, Andrew, I know we've, we've kind of left you in the dark there a little bit, so welcome back. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> so give us a little bit of a backstory on how the Halo Wars Championship League came to be and materialized because from what we know and what we've started covering it was team respawn the banished and one other group that came together to really get this tournament or this league going but we kind of caught it after season one apparently so so what was the build-up to actually getting a formal league established for halo wars yeah sure so there were um Various Halo Wars communities that were running their own tournaments. We were one of those communities. And what eventually happened is all of the same top tier players would be in all the tournaments. And so Postums actually was, um, if I remember right, I think Postums started being involved in Halo Wars before he moved over to the MCC. And so he reached out to us pretty quickly early on and he said hey we're thinking about making some sort of halo wars league that's recognized by 343 and we'll have uh that's run entirely by the community but they're working together but also doing their own thing at the same time okay and eventually the details were ironed out to where pretty much how i said earlier we have points that are awarded to players who are in each organizations individual tournaments and then over the course of a season we'll have an invitational which is the finale for that season of tournaments and what we did for season one is um one organization would um host the entire invitational on their twitch but there were so many games that they had to cast that they actually asked us and the Banish to help out casting as well. And so we would have various brackets that we would stream on all of our Twitch channels uh, at the same time. So the Invitational took like a whole weekend of all three organizations casting and having... It was really a lot of fun. And it, it was cool. Um, we We didn't come back for season two and really the main reason was is that i just don't have the time to run a halo wars 2 tournament and cast it and organize and everything would take eight to 12 hours on a saturday and that's just something i don't have time because i'm currently in in grad school myself so i remember those grad school days (laughs) yeah so i'm i'm really glad that it's it's doing well on its own um, some other organizations have stepped in and taken where we left off, and I think it's in a good place right now. Good. Yeah, it's definitely seen, like I said before earlier in the show, it seems like a lot of people have really put time and effort into making it something that is recognized by the community and is successful. 
Yeah, and and what's great too is that there's there's a ton of people who are really really good at Halo Wars too, and at the same time they're very willing to help new players. Because when Halo Wars two got added to Game Pass, I can be one of those players. <laughs> <laughs> when Halo Wars two got added to Game Pass, there was just a huge influx of of new players, and even still, there's a few players out there who like to look at the APIs. Of, of the stats of Halo Wars 2 to see like how healthy the game is doing. And from what they say, I was just talking to a guy earlier this week, that Halo Wars 2 is still growing in terms of players playing it. Really? I don't know how they're discovering it, whether it's through YouTube or HWCL or just they're stoked about Halo in general or is it Game Pass? I have no idea, but the game is growing and there there's always new players joining. So it's a great game. I think even if you're not a strategy type person, if you don't like RTS games, I still think you should give it a try just because Halo Wars 1 especially had a great story. And and the cutscenes were the first yeah. to be done by Blur. And they still look fantastic 10 years later. Oh, yes, they do. It's all around. Just it's great. And I'm really glad that Halo Wars 2 actually exists because we had a very small amount of people being very whiny on Twitter and and begging for a Halo Wars 2 and it eventually happened and it, it's a great game. Yeah, I, and I can I will be the first to attest and GT can also confirm this that I I don't play RTS. I I am not an RTS player at all. But the obviously the story is the thing that really got me involved with Halo and even though I suck at the game, the story behind Halo Wars and Halo Wars 2 are both really great additions to the Halo mythos overall. Yeah. And I really do enjoy that Halo Wars 1 takes place so far before Halo Reach. And it really helps explain a lot of the beginnings of the Human Covenant War. You know, when you go on to Harvest and there, there is a little bit of, of discrepancies there's there's a few things that are explained in the books and in various other games that don't add up in Halo Wars 1, but, you know, that's okay. Yeah, and it's... I mean, the continuity of those games did start to get a little out of whack. Um, and obviously, 343 tried their best to remediate some of those issues, but for the most part, I think it's... Just, just being able to kind of look that far back in a game, not just in the book anymore, and get this whole other aspect of the universe. I think this it was kind of the first time we really saw, like for for people that don't read the books at all, and just follow the the game franchise, this is your first look into hey this this is some other stuff that actually kind of plays into where, or it kind of lays some foundation for the universe overall. Right, and and what I love about just the story of both Halo Wars games is that it, it has its own unique cast of characters that continues in the second one. They didn't have to do that when they made Halo Wars 2. They could have either tied it into Halo 5 more, or they could have made their own cast for Halo Wars 2, but instead they decided to continue that story, which I thought was really cool. It was it was a great fan service thing that they did there. No, certainly. In my opinion, I think it would have been... It, it, wouldn't have made much sense if they had other people in the the Halo Wars 2 game, but I mean, I'm happy that they were in there. Yeah, and, and the way that the story ends, I'm not going to spoil the game, but it does end on a cliffhanger. Mm-hmm. So I'm very curious to see what they do with those characters. I think most people know what the cliffhanger is, but yeah, if, if people don't know, then there, there's there's a significant one out there. Yeah, it's play the game. Oh, look up the YouTube video. I mean, it's it's on par with Halo 5's cliffhanger, in my opinion, of how it just just stops. And I I hope that if if there is never a Halo Wars three, which there could be a good chance that there never is a Halo Wars three, I hope that they do wrap it up in a novel or a comic or or something, because there are a lot of people who care about that that storyline, and I do feel like. Just because it's it is an RTS game that Halo Wars kind of gets swept under the rug 
for the FPS games, and and it should because that's more important. I mean, the FPS games run the franchise, and Halo Wars just kind of complements it and it expands it. But I do think those characters have an important story to tell in the overall Halo universe. Yeah, there's even some Halo Four like story arc stuff that is kind of left open ended as well. Some of which addressed in comics and books, and some of it still not really addressed. Like the whole chaos thing with the librarian in Halo Four still is kind of like one of those unexplored, or not, not chaos. Uh, like the the changes that Master Chief had to undergo and Cortana had to undergo from the librarian. Like those are still kind of open ended things. Yeah, very true. So there's there's still lots of dangling pieces out in the universe. Yeah. But as as the universe continues to grow, I think it's just going to become more and more like that. Which is fine. Yeah. As long as they get to it eventually, I'll, I'll be satisfied. Right. So for get, getting back onto the, the Halo Wars topic, I guess we're kind of on it, just a little tainted. But for, for the Halo Wars Championship League, where are, we, where are you guys at, at now? You're, I, th- I thought I heard recently that there is a Season 4 announced. So you just had your tournament a couple of weeks ago or coming up, something like that. Um, as, as far as I know, I believe that's true. I personally am not involved with it as much. And honestly, it's due to time. And, and plus, I think that there's much better people out there who enjoy to cast the games. Um, more than I do, and it's not to say that I don't enjoy casting, but there are people who can really analyze what's going on. You know, in RTS games, people can have all sorts of micromanagement with their units and building strategies and everything, and and I'm just more interested in the action, and so I'll completely miss those sorts of plays. And so there's there's much better people out there who are casting it now. So, to to find out more about HWCL, there's plenty of discords out there that organize those sorts of things. And and if no one knows, you can always head to mine and I can point you in the right direction. But it is still going strong. And there's other communities out there, too, who do their own unique tournaments. Like everyone has to play as a certain leader or everyone only has to make certain units. There are other tournaments that are more geared to be fun than competitive as well. And do a lot is there a lot of coordination of trying to get those tournaments wrapped into the league or is it something where you let those tournament organizers come to the league to integrate in for the point stuff? So personally team respawn is more about having fun than being competitive. And that's just really how I am as a person. Um, Really the point of team respawn is a couple of friends playing Halo Wars and that's kind of it. When we were in HWCL, we were able to have a, um, instead of it being one on one, which is what the majority of HWCL tournaments were, we had uh, 2v2 tournaments as well as 1v1, but each of you get a legendary AI. Okay. Just to see how that fares to make it more chaotic. Um, so those are recognized <laughs> in the league, um, but they may have changed the rules, but back when we did it, it didn't um, affect the overall standing. So if you just like swept a whole. 2v2 tournament, it didn't affect anything in the Invitational. Okay. Alright, interesting. So there's there's a little bit of a... I guess not, buffer's not the right word, but a little bit of a way to make sure there's not one community overwhelming another as far as points or tournaments and all that kind of stuff. Right, so the way it's divided is um, each organization... So you say, okay, we want our season to start this date and we want the Invitational to start this date. And then we say, okay, how many tournaments do we want to have total leading up to that Invitational? And then we'll break it down to you know, equal amount per organization. So in season one, each tr- each organization had three tournaments. Okay. So that way, no organization was stealing the spotlight from another. Makes sense. That way it's kind of a level experience throughout all the different tournaments, organizers. Right, exactly. Okay, very cool. Um, So I guess tell us a little bit more about Team Respawn specifically. You said you're like more kind of a open and fun community for Halo Wars. 
Yeah, so Team Respawn, um, we do everything from... The majority of our content nowadays is us goofing off playing multiplayer. I honestly, for some reason, I don't know why people find us as hilarious as they say we are. But we just love to kick back, enjoy Halo Wars. We've done everything from Mythbusters, which is where we will test various units in Halo Wars to see which ones are better than others. A few strategy videos. Different types of ways to interact with the game. So we had a series called Super Turtle, where it's kind of a strategy in RTS games where you inflict as much pain as possible to your opponent by uh, wasting as much of their time as possible. So you strictly just play defense and to see if they can break your defensive strategy. Interesting. So we'll have games that'll go two, three, four, five hours for one multiplayer match. And it's it's actually hilarious. Wow. It, it's if you're not into RTS games, it's not it may seem a little bit foreign. But it, it but it is a thing. There's there's a saying in Halo Wars that is long games are earned and not given. And it's kinda like a meme and a joke, but it's also true at the same time to where Really, really good Halo Wars 2 players can wrap up a game in 10 to 15 minutes. I'm not one of those players. <laughs> okay. Usually my games will be like 30 minutes or so. And the skill levels can vary greatly in Halo Wars. So they have a ranking system, um, and it's really spot on. Depending on what your rank is, they'll, they'll get you someone really close to your skill level. But That's if good. you just want to kick back and relax, they have the unranked playlist. And and that's great too for new players, as well as for people who aren't going to take it too seriously, like myself. Good, yeah, that, that's awesome to hear, especially for me since I suck at RTSs. So yeah, and give it a shot on both platforms. So it, it plays a lot differently on PC than Xbox, and they are cross-platform. I've been playing on Xbox for two years, and I just recently switched over to PC, and it, it's it's really great because. There's just something about sitting in front of it with a mouse and keyboard. You can control your units better, uh, in my opinion. Um, the frame rate isn't... I think it's bumped up to 60, either that or it's not locked on PC. Okay. So it's a lot more fluid. You can see a lot more of what's going on. But I honestly, I don't think one platform has an advantage over the other because the controls are so good on Xbox. It's, it's really... Hmm. I mean, it's really easy to pick up. It's really easy to memorize, and it, I don't. I really don't feel like you're at a disadvantage if you're on a controller. That's interesting because you know, between I the two, played... about the only real, the only real disadvantage is you know how many different groups you can assign. Right. So you you can assign up to four groups on a controller, um, and it is when you get to that advanced control scheme, there is a lot of multiple button pressing, and it kind of can get complicated. Majority of the time, though, everyone either selects all units or local units, and they'll usually just keep them at, at that most of the time. Yeah, I find that's kind of what I do going because I'm playing through Halo Wars right now to try to get achievements, and that's why I'm finding with Halo Wars. But I've always done Halo Wars 2 with mouse and keyboard just because it came out that way, and that to me, RTS is probably a better is well to me is a better experience with a mouse and a keyboard because you can just do so much more um, more easily and quickly. Right, and I think the reason why mouse and keyboard and controller for Halo Wars is on a more level playing field is a lot to do with the economic side of the game. Um, I mean, you just build your supply pad and your power generator and you're done. You're going to get resources for forever. And a lot of other RTS games, especially Age of Empires, you got to micromanage your villagers to get six different resource groups to spend on your units in Halo Wars it's really simple so that makes it right. a little bit easier yeah and I micromanage too much to the point where I, I just micromanage myself into a hole and that's one of the reasons why I'm not so great at RTSs yeah a lot of the times what I've learned in Halo Wars is if you screw up in the beginning you, you can there's a good chance you're going to lose the game so the, the first five ten minutes of a Halo Wars match is very critical because if you spend too much time putting it into unit upgrades instead of getting the amount of units, someone can just come in and steamroll you 
very quickly. Yep, yeah, that makes sense. It's definitely worth a shot. I mean, if if you haven't played Halo Wars to anyone watching, I mean, it is definitely worth just going through the campaign. It's really good at holding that line in between, like holding your hand and letting you be freely open to do what you want in each of the missions. And it tells a really good story along the way, too. Yeah. And for the, I mean, again, the story is just great for Halo Wars. But when it comes to multiplayer, I... I really haven't dug into it that much. Yeah, and there there is a good community out there for new players. They're very welcoming, which is really something I appreciate. I really don't think Halo Wars 2 would exist if the Halo Wars community in general wasn't as welcoming as they are. No, I, and yeah, that, that makes sense. I just need to to dive into that community and maybe team respawn is the, the first place I need to go to there. There's more than just us though. I mean, if you're going to get into Halo oh, yeah. Wars, definitely explore all the other ones. We're just fortunate enough to be uh, a part of it. And we just have a blast making YouTube videos. Um, we're not in team respawns. Not, not about becoming, you know, a massive YouTube channel. We're not about money or views or exposure or any of that. It, all it is is friends having fun playing Halo and posting it online. That's that's kind of where we are as far as just the podcast and community game nights and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I mean, if you, I feel like if you just take something that you enjoy, everything else will fall into place. I mean, we're very fortunate enough to be one of the biggest Halo Wars communities on YouTube and be able to welcome new players and and show people that there's more to this game than just being another you know quickly made RTS game that some people will claim it to be and it definitely does not reflect the bomb reviews it has on the Windows store either <laughs> really really i didn't i guess i wasn't really aware of i guess kind of the negative re- uh reception of it well it's mostly due they do have a point but it's it's due to confusion between the way that the game was marketed so it has to do with all the dlc in the game so it's halo 5 right (laughs) it's very much that same mistake of the marketing so they announced that hey you you pay it was 90 dollars for the uh, it's the Ultimate Edition, is what it was called. And you got the game, Halo Wars 2, and then you got all future DLC leaders, which ended up being like 13. There was a lot. And then a couple of extra campaign missions called Operation Spearbreaker, which had to do with some ODST squads set in the Halo Wars timeline. Yep. Before they were done with releasing all the content for the Season Pass they went ahead and announced an expansion pack called Awakening the Nightmare, which had the flood and the firefight mode. And they said, oh, this is going to be an extra $20. And that triggered everyone because they said, well, you're not even done with the Mm. season pass and you're having an expansion pack that's $20. Then when all of that was all said and done, they went ahead and released Halo Wars 2 Complete Edition, which had everything in the Ultimate Edition and that Awakening the Nightmare DLC. And it was cheaper. And so that's what got everyone triggered. And that's why it has the low reviews on the Windows Store. Well, that's one of those arguments where you have to think that it's... It, that happens with all games, though. Eventually there's a a Ultimate Edition or Game of the Year Edition where everything is bundled in and it's cheaper. Right. I mean, this isn't anything new. This People shouldn't really be surprised. Well, some people wanted Awakening the Nightmare to be free because they went ahead and announced the season pass. And from the beginning, I had the standpoint of you should just, just see the amount of quality and the amount of content you get in that expansion pack. I mean, compared to the free missions that you got in Spearbreaker, which were just two quick missions you can do in about an hour, to Awakening the Nightmare, which was a whole new campaign, a couple of leaders, multiplayer maps, the firefight game mode. I mean, they're not going to go out and spend months and months and months building that expansion just to give it out for free. I mean, that, things cost money. 
Yeah, I just think they could have handled it, handled that better. Oh, absolutely. Like, finish the Promise DLC and then announce this add-on. Right. And I totally agree. You know, if they I, it was just, just pushed it past, you know, that second DLC, it would have been fine. Yep. I agree. Uh, they just announced it way too early. They did. And I think it was just because they were a rush to get it in for E3 that year. And that was actually the year I managed to go to E3 and I was able to play Awakening the Nightmare way early before it came out. And there were people in line who were very confused. I mean, they were asking questions, you know, why isn't this in the, in the season pass? So f- from the beginning, everyone was confused and they, they really should have handled it better. But I think they've learned their lesson and really everything since then has been been great. I mean, now that's when we got the MCC insider builds was right after they were done with Halo Wars 2. And and now they're they're still working on Halo Wars 2, even though um, the team that built it, Creative Assembly, has moved on. They handed the project over to 343 entirely. And one dude, Renzi, he works really closely with postums for the Halo Wars 2 community. Just in his spare time, he went ahead and made the new Halo Wars 2 map, Fort Jordan. Because they asked a long time ago, this is probably about a year ago now, they asked, what do people want? In Halo Wars 2, and overwhelmingly, everyone said maps. The community is very opinionated on the maps. Halo Wars 1, the suite of maps in that game is fantastic. All the maps in Halo Wars 1 are really diverse. Um, The environments are really different. The way that they're structured is different. There's some symmetrical and some non-symmetrical maps. I mean, Halo Wars 1 knocked out of the park with maps. And Halo Wars 2 really doesn't. Um, they're, they're all very similar in their design. Um, a lot of them just have three lanes, kind of almost like a MOBA and they don't really vary from each other. They do to some degree, but not as much as Halo Wars one. And so now they've requested maps. They went ahead and made Fort Jordan, which is a map from Halo Wars one. Um, and it's completely different than anything in Halo Wars two. So I really do think once that map's done with their testing, and it gets put into multiplayer, a lot of more people are going to pick it up. If, or at least people who said, you know, maybe I'll wait till more maps come out. And now, when the map gets put into matchmaking rotation, they'll be able to give it a shot. Because they did a really good job on that map. It, it, it is... I mean, it's just like a remaster of that map. It's, it's really good. Yeah, the, really the only complaint I have on that map is the lack of a certain set of shield doors. The ones in the middle... Yeah, I, I'm the same way, but they did say that they can't necessarily make a bunch of new assets just for that map. And Yeah, I understand. That sort of functionality wasn't in Halo Wars 2. Well, you know, the that, that particular deal, it's a double-edged sword. It is. It's great when you got control of those shield doors, but when you don't, then it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm just fortunate enough that the map is in the game. I I can live without the shield doors in the middle because a lot of the dynamics of Halo Wars 2 is a little bit different from Halo Wars 1. Like, siege units were not a thing in Halo Wars 1. And now they are in Halo Wars 2. And there's a lot more emphasis on air in Halo Wars 2 than there was on Halo Wars 1. I think just with siege and air alone, that would render the doors useless, even if they did went ahead and put them in. Because I can just make some siege weapons at my base and take out that those shield doors without even having line of sight. Yeah, yeah. With you know, with v- or units like the Kodiak and the uh, I forget what the what the uh, Covenant one was. The blister the back. plasma turret. Oh yeah, the blister back. It, yeah, it kind of does render that kind of stuff use- useless. And you can make units invisible too when you make a shroud or a nightingale. And so I could just make some anti-infantry units invisible and then just walk right up to those shield doors and wipe them out anyway. So I I understand why it's not in there, um, but I also understand why people are upset too. I mean, you you can't please everyone. Oh, no, you you never will. And if you try, you wind up with the MCC. Oh, Um, (laughs) (laughs) no. Oh, (laughs) Yeah, like I said, that is the only 
noticeable thing that I that I have noticed on that map is just the lack of having those shield doors. And it's not something that I want or miss. You know, I it's just it's different. Right. In Halo Wars 2, the map does feel like it's a lot it's more substantial in size. It is. Than it was in Halo Wars 1. It is. And that's because you can have more units on the screen in 2 than you did in Halo Wars 1. And I think a lot of it has to do with the line of sight that's given on your base. And when you start making watchtowers to expand your line of sight, as well as having enough size for big battles to happen, especially when it's 3v3. So I don't think it's too big. The only time I think it would be too big is when you're playing 1v1 on that map, um, because it doesn't scale. Some of the other Halo Wars 2 maps do scale. So if I'm playing. 1v1 on a certain map, that map will actually be smaller. They'll block off certain portions of that map. And as you add more players, that map will get bigger. But that's not the case in this map. So I think if you play 1v1, it's going to be huge. But it'll be great for 3v3. Yeah, like I said, I was just doing it against, you know, 1v1 against an AI just to kind of get a feel for it. Right. And yeah, with with us, you know, just two players on the field, it's enormous. Yep. <laughs> It is. It, I, it's probably by far the biggest 1v1 map. Yeah. In, you know, in Halo Wars, it didn't feel that big. You know, it didn't, it, you know, just the sheer travel time uh, for each unit, you would get to different places faster. Right. And it's probably because that is true. Um, they did have to make the map bigger. To compensate for the larger units and the bigger battles in Halo Wars 2. I wonder if... So, again, I haven't really played multiplayer on Halo Wars 2, aside from some achievements. But (laughs) I know in Halo Wars, the original, all the maps had specific sizes. So a map is either a 1v1, 2v2, or 3v3. Right. Yeah, but in a custom game, you could play any map any way you wanted. You could play it 1v1, you could play it 2v2 or 3v3. You know, the only thing you couldn't do was play a 3v3 on a 1v1 map. Okay. But you could 1v1 on any map. And then on the 2v2, you could either use the 2v2 maps or the 3v3 maps. Okay. Yeah, the only thing you couldn't do is go down a size. Right, exactly. Gotcha. So I guess in in a way, though, with how they do the matchmaking it, it seemed like the each map was designed to a certain size even though you could play with different sizes yeah in custom games um you know like 14 it it was designed to be a 3v3 map yep it was i think the way that they designed the halo wars 2 maps is if i were to guess they they designed them as 3v3 maps and then went smaller as you took out more players because it just cuts out sides of the map. Like you can you can go over your cursor and see that portion of the map in Halo Wars 2. Like let's say we're playing 2v2 on a 3v3 map. I can see that section of the map with my cursor, but my units can't go there. They put like an invisible wall there to block off a certain lane or a certain section of where the third player's base would be located. So the maps get smaller in Halo Wars 2, the less players you have. The only exception to that is now the new Fort Jordan map. Okay. Gotcha. The maps scale themselves to the number of players. Right, exactly. That's kind of cool. I mean, there's probably a little bit of weird disruption to to gameplay a little bit, but it's cool that they could do that. It is. Um... I initially criticized it on launch because, you know, Halo Wars 1 had a ton of maps and they were all diverse and they were all unique in the amount of players that could be played on them. Halo Wars 2 does not and it has much fewer maps. So that's, I I really do believe that's one reason why the community wants a lot of more maps added is because there's only... I don't know how many maps are in Halo Wars 2, but it's not as many as Halo Wars 1. Yeah, I think Halo Wars 1 had like 16 maps. Yeah, a lot. It had a lot. You know, I think for, you know, for each play size, it had like 
four maps at least. Yeah. And they added more with the DLC packs too in Halo Wars 1. But I think Halo Wars 2 has 9, 10, or 12 maps, something like that. And in my opinion, it gets old playing on the same maps in rotation. I would like to have maps unique to just 2v2, like Halo Wars 1 did. Granted, I know that everyone's attention's on the MCC and Infinite and all that, and the chances of getting more maps are very, very slim in the future, but I still voice my opinion, and I really do believe that the community is the reason why we got this Fort Jordan map. I mean... And actually, we still get balance updates to Halo Wars 2 um, with every new season. And there's there's actually a Discord server of all the top players in the world who get together. And they talk about different balance changes that they can make to the game. You know, maybe this works, maybe this doesn't. Let's nerf this, let's buff that. And 343 really takes all their input, and really that's the majority of what the balance changes are in every season when they hit Waypoint, is from the community. And really, and things like the HWCL and even the whole Fort Jordan map, 343 doesn't have to do that. They can just say, we're done with Halo Wars 2 and move on. And, you know, people would be upset, but it's not like they have to go and support the game. They're doing it because... There is a small amount of fans, and there's there's a lot of people who love to play it on a regular basis, um, and they know that that's what keeps them engaged and coming back to Halo, um, and so they dedicate those resources to it, which is great. Well, that's something that I really got to give credit to 343 for. They have proven that they are dedicated to the Halo, to the Halo games. Right. You know, they want to keep updating these games. Granted, the updates do get smaller, like, you know, with Halo Wars 2, it's pretty much down to balance updates now. But, you know, with all the work they did on the MCC, you know, they took a year and a half to go through and update MCC to make it what it should have been at launch. Yes, it should have been what it is now at launch. You know, we're past that, but it shows that they still care. You know, they still, you know, eat. When Halo 3 launched, anything that Bungie was doing with Halo 2 just stopped. When Reach launched, pretty much everything ground to a halt on Halo 3. Yeah. You know, it became, the new game became the focus, and that's how it was pretty much industry-wide. You know, whatever the current game was is the one you focused on. Once your next game launched, then that game gets dropped and you move to the new game. And what 343 is doing is they're still paying attention to their their whole catalog. And that's really impresses me. Do you think that has to do something with how the gaming industry has changed a little bit? Or is that something that we really only see in in Halo as far as... Because I know there's like all the recent stuff with Battle Royale and there's all the season with that kind of stuff. But... Is With there another the limited franchise exposure that... that I have, and keep this in mind, I have a very limited exposure to different game studios, but from what I've seen so far, uh, the new hotness is what gets all the attention. Attention, the old stuff just gets forgot about. The only you know the only time that gets 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 attention is when it breaks. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like you know with the original Destiny. Bungie doesn't do anything with it anymore. You know, there's no true special content, no nothing. You can still play the game, you know, just as you did, but there's no new items coming in, you know, no rotational playlists or anything like that. The only thing they've got is, you know, like their, uh, their nightfall strikes are on a set rotation. Okay. You know, it, it, you know the reoccurring stuff that you that that shows up you know on you know reset day or on Fridays for the weekend it's all just set on an automatic rotation it's not something that they're going in and manually doing right it's just not it seems like it's relatively unique to 343 i'm sure there's other game 
game companies out there doing it, but it seems to be really unique to 343. And, and you can tell that, that they actually do care. They're not doing it because they have to. I think they're doing it because they want to. I mean, Renzi, he didn't have to go out and make that map because he... Renzi, I think, is really the only guy on 343 who is actually regularly dedicated to Halo Wars 2. And for like about the past year, that's mostly been balance changes. And I would guess that he didn't have to go out and make the Fort Jordan map because 343 told him to. I think he, he did it because he wants to and he loves Halo Wars. And Postums and Renzi are in all of our discords and, and they talk with us on a regular basis about how the game's doing. Um, they even did a, a, a content update a little while ago that squashed a lot of bugs that a lot of players were complaining about. Um, that really stabilize the game. And so they really do go the extra mile to know that, hey, like we recognize that there are a group of people that love Halo Wars and that they're that they want improvements and they're gonna do what they can to deliver those improvements. And that's something I've been really impressed by the whole time I've been involved with 343. There can be some times where they get busy and you don't hear back from them for a few days or a few weeks, but I mean that's expected with um, with anyone who's working inside the industry, and they definitely have other projects that take priority above Halo Wars too. And once you come to terms with that, you realize that they're doing a great job with Halo Wars too, and I'm I'm really impressed and. I give them a ton of credit for it, and I think that's the reason why the game is is have has such a healthy amount of matchmaking players. I mean, you can hop on Halo Wars two at any time and find a match very very quickly. So I, I give them all the props to it. They've done a great job with it. That's great. That and I think for the most part, you have three because kind of like recent titles that three four three is still focused on. So you have MCC supporting. Everyone who's nostalgic about the the older Halos, uh, then you have Halo Five, kind of being the latest greatest in Halo Wars. So you have Halo Five and Halo Wars being the two mainline games in recent. So it makes sense that those two are updated. But the fact that MCC is getting the update and the focus ads getting, I think, is just a testament to how much Three Four Three really cares about what the community is saying and really wants to cater to something that they also care about and would want to be catered to as well. Right. I mean, cause most of the people that are working at the studio now or, or people that you see a lot of like in the spotlight for the media and stuff, they, they love the franchise. Um, they really love halo. So they want to make, they want to make halo the best they can, it can be because they also enjoy the franchise. Yeah, I agree. And and part of me thinks too that this may be a wild guess here, but kind of goes to their love of MCC and them wanting to make sure that it's the best that it can be. Maybe do you think that them announcing that the MCC and, and Reach will be joining both the base Master Chief Collection on Xbox One and it's coming to PC and all that, do you think that that has bought them some time to work on Infinite some more? Because my guess would be that there's no way that they would want to put all this hype and attention and detail into the Master Chief Collection, especially on PC, and slowly release these games one at a time throughout the remainder of 2019, and then drop Infinite late 2019. I just don't think that makes sense. I think that Maybe they saw, hey, maybe we spent 2019 building out the MCC on PC, and then 2020, we drop Halo Infinite. I do think that this announcement shuts the door on Infinite in 2019, but that's just my opinion. Well, so there's... If we look at the stuff that Bonnie kind of talked about during the IGN interview, they were promising the dev team for a while a new engine. And whenever you're trying to develop an engine, that's going to take time to actually get that nailed down. So right. from a, from a development standpoint, I don't think they've, and, and I th I'm pretty sure I'm safe when I'm saying that they're not really taking away from the development team behind infinite. There's obviously a handful of people working on MCC and Halo Wars two and, 
the Halo Five content stuff, but that that's that's a small separate team, right? And I don't think this announcement for MCC on PC or the additional content that's being put out there is really having an impact. Like, if none of that happened, if we just had these games, I don't think it would have significantly affected the release time of Infinite. I, th- I think regardless of all this extra content out there, we would still be seeing an Infinite release of 2020. So you don't think even regardless of, of this news of MCC this week, you think even before this announcement that Infinite was a 2020 release? Yes. I just think from... And a- that's, just, that's just my take on it. and. Some like there, there's reasons I I have that thought of inf- of why Infinite should be kind of out there, and one of the big reasons is because they're they're they they built a brand new engine in house, so you're taking a lot of development cycles to really build that engine, and, and of course part of the game development is developing the story and the assets and whatnot. But the only things you can really do while you're building a new engine is maybe come out come up with the the storyline of it, but and, and maybe concept art, but you can't engineer sound assets or graphic assets or any of that stuff because you're relying on an engine that doesn't even exist yet. I just feel like from a marketing standpoint, it doesn't make sense for both to come out in 2019. Yeah, uh, I definitely agree that you know 2020 will be Halo Infinite. Just with the time the time frame that they've already discussed. And, you know, the comments that are made, it just, it does not sound in any way, shape or form that they're going to get it out this year. You know, right. and, just- they, and they mentioned during the, uh, during one of the live streams that flying programs for PC is going to be 2020. So that's all, already an indicator that we're not getting the game this year. They, they've, they've essentially said that without like, directly saying it that Halo Infinite is not is not coming out until at least 2020. That is that is implied fact. You know, I personally feel they should take all the time that they need to make it right. And and who knows, maybe we'll even see Infinite being being a launch title on the next Xbox cuz 2020 will be 7 years for the Xbox One. So a lot of speculation is going around about Halo being a launch title for the next Xbox. Right. A lot of speculation. And I think that makes sense. But I think a lot of things have to go right for that next box to have a really successful launch. I mean, I think at this point, backwards compatibility has to be expected of all the work that they've well, put I'm, in this I'm generation. I'm pretty sure that Microsoft has learned that lesson. And they've already stated that future Xboxes will support the older games, the older hardware, so you'll be able to take your Elite controller with you to the new Xbox. Right. And that's smart. Right. It's, it's still within the Xbox One family of consoles. Right. They've stated that you will be able to play new games on the old hardware. Granted, you will probably take a visual hit on them. Um, so, the you know, the games are, are going to have to be dynamic as far as you know, actually knowing what hardware you're running. Yep. So, yes, you know, buying the newest console will give you the best graphic, you know, graphical uh, experience. So I don't think, I, I, I'm i I'm sure they've learned their the backwards compatibility, compatibility lesson, especially with the huge backlash that came when they launched the Xbox One saying that it wasn't possible. Right. But that was still under the Don Matrick era as well. <laughs> well, also, when the Xbox launched, it was an entirely different animal than it is today. Yep. Yes, the hardware is the same, but the operating system has been basically gutted and replaced. You know, with that change, other possibilities became available. Right. You know, it became to the point where they were able to run or build an emulator for the Xbox One. And that emulator's mm-hmm. tuned for each individual game as well. It's it's really cool. Uh, I think, was it IGN really? or Digital Foundry went into great detail on how 
that team works and how that software works. I mean, it, it's it's really amazing some of the things that they pull off to get backwards compatibility to work. Oh yeah, they yeah they go in and they custom tune the emulator to each game. I didn't know that. Yeah, Halo Reach was notorious for having massive backwards compatibility problems. I mean the the frame oh, yeah. the frame rate was just terrible for the longest time, and then they they changed something behind the scenes with a with actually an update when you launched um, Halo Reach, and um, it fixed it. Yeah, when they when it first came to backwards compatibility or came to Xbox One, it was horrid to play. Yeah. Yeah. It was better I mean, on your the 360. Even in the menu, it was horrid. Yeah, you would get better frame rates and better performance if you just put in your Halo Reach disc on your 360. Mm-hmm. But it, it, that's not the case anymore. But when it came out, it, it was atrocious. I didn't know the engine was specifically tuned for each game. I wasn't aware of that. I didn't really appreciate that, I guess. Yeah, it's really impressive. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> the more you know. Yeah. Da, da, da. <laughs> I don't think there's anything else I could really ask. I think GT's covered a lot of a lot of the stuff too. I have one last question. What is the strangest thing you ever saw in Halo Wars One while playing either custom games, matchmaking, or campaign? Okay. So um we were actually doing a Mythbusters test few years ago <laughs> and we wanted to see if it was impo- if it was possible to make an invincible scarab so you just put a ton of engineers on a scarab and for those who aren't familiar the engineer that you see in Halo 3 ODST is a very popular unit in Halo Wars and what it does is it will heal your units in combat and so we made a scarab with, I don't know, 30 or 40 engineers sitting right on top of the scarab. And then um, another player brought a ton of hunter squads, which are anti-vehicle in the game. And the hunter squads, you know, attacked the scarab, you know, focus fire on it. And it took the health down instantaneously. And then the scarab died. Hunters in Halo Wars 1 and Halo Wars 2 cannot attack air. It's just impossible. Um, But for some reason, in that instance, when the Scarab blew up, all of the hunters started attacking the engineers. And they were just blowing away the engineers left and right. And they were actually getting veterancy, too. I mean, they were getting stars for taking out these engineers. (laughs) Wow. And so we have it recorded. It's it's on the channel. And it it was insane. So that that's probably by far the strangest thing I've seen in Halo Wars. I mean, there's there's other weird things too. Like you'll see a unit be like become micro sized to where you can't even see it anymore. Lots of bugs that I encountered in in Halo Wars One. Um, Halo Wars Two, I saw one time Jerome could walk in the air. He would just kind of float around. <laughs> I had one yesterday. Where a scarab was walking upside down. (laughs) (laughs) If you just play the game enough, you'll find these really rare bugs. And and it's hilarious. Well, the reason I ask is back in OG Halo Wars, me and a friend of mine, we were working on some of the co-op, or, you know, some of the multiplier achievements uh, that, you know, you do in custom games. You know, like teleport 50 units, stuff like that. And so we, you know, we're sitting there, you know, we, we all, we get all ready. I've got two scarabs and a prophet fully upgraded. And by this particular point in the game, both scarabs are fully veteran. Right. Anyway, so he brings in his units and they were, you know, just the regular squad units, you know, the three grunts and the elite. And I sat here and just annihilate his entire army except for one grunt (laughs) it just wouldn't die it wouldn't die and it turned invisible (laughs) that's funny the only time i could see it is when he'd move it that's hilarious that's i've actually got a video of it on my youtube channel you know I, i i uploaded it several years ago 
it's it's just weird. You know, you said the units go micro size and just disappear. Well, this one didn't do that. It just vanished. Yeah. But when he when my friend would move it, it would show up. That's really I mean, strange. At one point, I had both scarab shooting this thing and the prophet's beam just hammering on this grunt, <laughs> and it would not die. That's funny. I've never heard that one before. That's almost like because whenever I hear these things, I'm like, what what lines of code would make that happen? And it's almost like the asset got disassociated with some values of yeah. You'd be really surprised on some of the small amounts of detail they put into Halo Wars 1, especially Halo Wars 1 um, on the 360. Um, Ensemble did a great job. I mean, there's some small things. Well, they made Age of Empires, so they're they're known for their RTSs. Right. But, like, you know, if you have a grunt squad and you just make it and you select it, there'll be the actor, the voice actor who plays it is a grunt. Like you would hear in like Halo 3 or Halo 2 or whatever. And the Grunt Squad is led by an elite. But the voice that comes through your screen is a grunt. But if you go and you kill off every unit in that squad except the elite, and you select that Grunt Squad again, it'll change to the elite voice actor. Oh. Because the elite's the only one left alive in the squad. So the elite will be talking. That's... I mean, it's really small things like that that really be like, wow, they they really did love the Halo universe and they just spent a great amount of time making every detail perfect. Good attention to detail. Yeah. No, that's great. Yeah, if anybody wants to see see this invincible ground, I posted a link in the Mixer chat. (laughs) Yeah, I'll definitely have to take a look. That's pretty funny. Again, I haven't played enough multiplayer to run into any of these things. <laughs> well, so this was just me and a buddy screw, screwing around in custom games. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, we were helping each other get achievements. Yeah. Speaking of achievements, I've been getting some recently. That's good. <laughs> I have been streaming. I don't know if you know this, Andrew, but I've been streaming Halo Wars, trying to get some of the achievements from the original game with one of the other Potacular members so uh over the last couple of weeks i've managed to get five achievements for halo wars so last week i got my virtual friends love me which is the uh, play with two ai allies and win and then kill joy and then this past week uh completed co-op heroic campaign so i got the heroic completion and the uh, co-op completion. And then I got the wall of recognition, which is completing all missions and getting gold on them. So got all those and I'm down to eight achievements left on the original game. Oh, there you go. And this is the one for the 360. Yeah. Yeah. Um, have you gotten the achievements for the various ranks in multiplayer? Nope. Uh, not yet. The, the same friend that I'm going through with all these other achievements, he's going to help me with getting that rank. So we're just going to kind of alternate on winning and losing in one, 1v1s. Right. Since there's like zero population. <laughs> well, they actually they had like a server change on the back end that they used to have counters on Halo Reach and Halo Wars that told you how many players were online. But they had a, a a back-end update that, that broke that functionality. So th- there may be people playing, it just doesn't tell you anymore. Oh. So all of them will say zero players, but there there, are, there could be players online. I, I don't play Halo Wars 1 online anymore on the 360, even though I would love to. And I really do believe that no one plays it, um, which is sad. But I will tell you the achievement running the show, which is achieving the general rank, will take you forever. It it took me like five or six years to get it, and I played a lot. So my, my friend, uh, or Bobby, that's his name, uh, he said that there was some stuff that he looked up as far as a strategy to be able to get it done in... Well, if you're, if you're playing for like 12 hours a day in 57 days, so obviously you're not going to be playing that often, but... Or maybe... Or I, I don't remember how often it was, but 
he seemed to think it, it wasn't going to take incredibly long, but it would take some amount of time. Right. So there are so the way that it works is in Halo Wars One, you get points based on how well you play, and so you you can actually rig it to get your max score pretty quickly. So you just make like a bunch of units. You don't lose any units, and you destroy all the buildings, and you upgrade your units really quickly. Things like that will jump your multiplier up. <coughs> and I I think the max multiplier you can get is like 8.4 or something. And the max score you can get in a game is like, I think it may be 20,000 20, or 2,000 or something. Yeah, so you, you can really just do do the math to figure out how many games it would take you to get a perfect score to achieve it. Because you don't get... In in a real scenario, you're not going to get a perfect score every game. Right. It's pretty hard to get a perfect score every game, but um, it is achievable. It just may take you some time. And I just googled it, and it looks like general rank is nine hundred sixty thousand points. Yeah, you can look in the stats and see how many points you are to the next rank. I'm still recruit. I think I have eight thousand points left to get to lieutenant. Oh dear. And what was really well, cool? Let's see. I unlocked the running like the show said, I achievement didn't play multiplayer that much, <laughs> <laughs> and by that much I mean none. Another attention to detail is they copied the ranking system from Halo Three, um, and yeah. Halo Wars. The same, I noticed that same ranks and the same logos and emblems too. I just thought they just reused the assets when the game came out. I'm like, yeah, it makes sense. This is the latest game out there, and it it makes sense to have those ranks. There. Yeah. And there's some really cool stats that'll show on the ticker on the main screen if you wait long enough. If you just sit at the main screen, walk away for 10 minutes and come back, it'll it'll have some really cool statistics that aren't shown in your service record. Interesting. There's a lot of like hidden cool details and Easter eggs all throughout Halo Wars. I have to pick your brain sometime on that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it took me about 10 months to achieve uh, general rank. That's not playing it, you know, religiously every day, but not grinding it out. Right. But I did have a couple of friends that were kind enough to invite me along in their three V three maps matches. Yeah. You get a lot of points in three V three. Um, you know, that's where I spent most of my time and, you know, we'd get to the point where they, they're keeping keeping them at bay and I would just be back at my base, you know, building units, upgrading units and, you know, just to maximize my scores because they had already made general. So they're just helping you out. Yeah. That's good. Yep. So I'm doing that grind or at least working on it. So you can watch me on Sundays and see how it goes. Yeah. Good luck. Let me know how that goes. Yeah. Thanks. Probably get Lieutenant. Uh, within the next two streams or so, just to get that one out of the way, since it's the the first the first rank, quote unquote. But I think what we're gonna end up doing is grinding a lot off stream, just so I can when I do my achievement stream, since they're achievement streams, do some other games and actually get some achievements there. But we're gonna try to find a night or two a week where we can play a couple of games and just continually knock down or knock it away. But it'll take some time, just like Lazo is going to take a lot of time. <laughs> Unless I cheat it, which I, I'm considering just <laughs> finding someone who has a checkpoint and can you get the achievement for me? Thanks. Considering it. Still not committed to that yet, but we'll see. If I can find somebody, I will. <laughs> There's people out there, I think, that just have them there for when people need to go through and do that. Well, in Halo Reach and Halo 4, I had specific drives, USB drives, that I would use and that had the saved checkpoint right before the end of the mission. So I only ever had to do those once. I would load that save checkpoint and... Wait, for MCC? No, on 360. Oh, on 360, okay. When, you know, the weekly challenge was complete such and such level on Lazo. Oh, that's smart. Oh, yeah, wow. That's where the, the old XBMC came in handy. Yeah, no kidding. All right. Good to know. 
All right. Well, thanks, Andrew, for dropping by the show. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. It was a good time. Indeed it was. Uh, we have a couple of wrap-up things to do for the show, so make sure you check out the latest Loot Crate-themed Renegade. And this one is Emil's, as far as the figure. So you have until April 15th at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern, midnight Eastern Time to order that crate. And if you head on over to podtechler.com slash Loot Crate, and use the Podtacular code at checkout, you will get $3 off your crate. I think there's another code going on right now for St. Patrick's Day, if it's still running. I think it was 30% off. I'm checking real quick to see if it's there. Yep, if you use Lucky30, you will get 30% off the crate that way, too. And that is, I think, through the end of this weekend. I'm checking to see if there's a... End date on it. This expires. Well, it actually expires tonight. So never mind. <laughs> for those of you in the stream, for those of you in the stream, you have approximately forty minutes, or no, yeah, forty minutes to use that code. <laughs> so everyone who's downloaded it, sorry, we're late. Um, but you can still use Podtacular and get three dollars off your crate. Uh, check out the uh, the Halo Hub. It's a Discord server where you can go and share community content, whether it's your own content or content you find across the internet. We want to hear all about it, so head on over to thehalohub.com. Uh, as for game night, I believe since Halo 5 was last week, you're doing MCC this week? Well, actually, technically last week we did MCC, but um, the community decided they wanted to play Halo 5. Gotcha. Okay. So I believe we're probably going to start shifting uh, away from MCC, but just not doing it every other week, just maybe doing it once a month or so. At least until it comes to PC and Reach comes around? Well, we'll see. <laughs> um, like, you know, one of the big problems right now with MCC is the fact that they only allow you to store 50 custom maps and game types which makes it very limiting where in the original versions of the games you could have a hundred per game per game so you know technically we should have at least 300 slots unfortunately due to the lack of custom games and Per the community because they they have a lot of fun playing you know Warzone and Super Fiesta which don't get me wrong the Fiesta in MCC is fun but it's not Super Fiesta. I hope they have Super Fiesta Day One and in Infinite. I hope they have the weapon sandbox that Halo Five has in Infinite, just to have Super Fiesta. I don't yeah. care if you don't include them anywhere else in the game. Just so we have them for Super Fiesta. The weapon sandbox, I know, is very different in Halo 5 than it is from all the other Halo games. But it's a fun sandbox for the weapons. Yeah. You know, with all the crazy different variations of each weapon, it it makes the Fiesta super. It may not be competitive, but it is hella fun. Oh, yeah, it's destroyed my KD. <laughs> but who cares? <laughs> it's super fiesta. You, you, you can't care. But I will have to admit, it's made me better with some weapons. It hasn't helped me with shotguns yet, but... Just get Blaze of Glory. Um, I think they do KD. You can't break out KD between social, customs, and arena rank, Well, right? yeah, you can, but just my overall, it's just kind of... <laughs> Makes sense. All right. So if those if there are people out there interested... Uh, who haven't been joining our game nights. Our game nights on, are on Fridays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, and that is hosted by Mr. GT himself. And you can check that out on Mixer, Twitch, and YouTube for the stream. Anyone is welcome to come join. You just have to message GT for an invite, and we'll get you in. Uh, for those listening to the podcast now, you already know one time we stream, but for those that are listening down via download if you care to join the live stream and join the live chat at any point then we do stream our podcast on thursdays at 9 p.m eastern time in addition to twitch mixer and youtube we also stream on twitter aka periscope and facebook 
or if you're interested in uh, checking out the live stream of the show, then we definitely recommend you do. You can also check out uh, my streams on Sunday at 10 p.m. Eastern time. That is when I are I'm doing my achievement hunting to search down getting 100% achievements and. It'll be interesting to see when they add the next hundred achievements for Master Chief Collection for Reach. Another thousand gamer score. Yeah, I kind of wonder if if they're gonna go achievement crazy with Reach as well. I I mean they they added another hundred for ODST, right? Or maybe it was fifty. I, I think it was fifty, but even still. It, it it'll be interesting to see what they do for achievements on reach yeah for see sure. the the whole deal is is it's a kind of a double-edged sword if they're separating out the game some being paid some not how do you handle the achievements do you well, only so- get access to the achievements if you buy the campaign or do you only get access to the multiplayer achievements and not the campaign achievements in the firefight achievements? Well, so the way it worked for the for like Halo 3 is if you didn't get the DLC, you just couldn't earn those achievements. Those achievements would still be right. locked. But so the the achievements were tied to the base game. Reach is the base game. It's not technically DLC originally. Um, I guess I'm misunderstanding your point. It just it, the achievement system, it, it's gonna be interesting. Um, you know, are they even going to have multiplayer achievements or is it all going to be, you know, just something behind the paywall? Ah, gotcha. I'm guessing it's just going to be, if they add achievements, it's going to be for the campaign firefight piece. Same way they, they did with ODST. If you didn't buy ODST, then you can't earn those ODST achievements, basically. They're still there. You just can't earn them. I, it's just, I, it'll be interesting to see how they work that and what the achievements will be. I wonder if they're no, going to do you. the get a million points in firefight thing again. I think that took all of 10 minutes for somebody to figure out that you can do that in about three minutes. Yeah, it, I don't think, no, if it's as short as that, but yeah, you can, as long as you have the firefight settings for it, you can get them done in, within one round of firefight. You could get a million. Yeah, that was pretty. Or, or maybe two rounds, something like that. That that was great when they uh, gave us all those options. Because I saw yes, that achievement, and I'm like, there is no way I'm ever going to get that achievement. And then something popped up in my YouTube vi- uh, feed. Get this achievement in five minutes. Use these settings. And I'm like, huh, how can I be this stupid? <laughs> yep. Just run around, hold games. your finger on, a, on the trigger, and kill a bunch of grunts. Yeah, as long as achievements don't say matchmaking, you uh-huh. just try it in customs and see if you can get it. So yeah, we'll, we'll have to see. Then I also stream on Tuesdays normally with the wife, although we are streaming tomorrow because we haven't streamed over the past couple of Tuesdays and she's had some school stuff to do. So we are actually going to stream tomorrow for, or not tomorrow, um, Saturday for our next installment. So we'll boot up Halo 2 and start on Delta Halo. Uh, that's all the streams that we have. An update on our Spartan Company commendations. Those that are interested in joining our company, we still have some slots open if you go to podtacular.com slash company. Everyone's welcome to join. Just request to enlist and we will get you joined up to the company. The ones that we're going for right now, or at least the, the few closest ones that we have, are Bodyguard, which is Protect a Teammate, we are under 2,000 away for that. Uh, the next one is From Downtown, which is Kill an Enemy Spartan from a Long Distance. That one is just a little bit over 700 to go there. And then the third one we have is Lawn Mower, uh, which is Splattering Somebody. And that is a little over 1,100 to go. For those that are interested in our social media, we are on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We also have our Discord server, which you can join. All that over at potagular.com slash Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Discord. 
And if we have it, just search for Podtacular on whatever platform and you will find us. Uh, again, Andrew, thank you for joining us tonight and talking about the latest MCC news and some uh, history behind Team Respawn and the Halo Wars championship. Yeah, thank you very much. Pleasure having you on. Uh, where can people find you? So we're on YouTube. Um, that's where we are the most frequent. It's youtube.com slash Team Respawn TV. We're on Twitter at Team Respawn TV. And uh, we have a Discord as well. Um, we have a Twitch page, but I haven't streamed in a couple of months, and that's something I like to get back into doing, but it is there. Very cool. And how often do you post videos on your YouTube? What do you say? I try to do about three or four a week. Majority of them are multiplayer videos uh, from other people in my team that are playing with me. I also do a lot of Halo discussion videos as well as analysis of the state of Halo in Halo Wars 2. Very nice. All right, everyone, thanks for tuning in to this episode. We'll catch you guys on one of our other streams, if not on next week's show. Until then, on Fragging Them Trucks. Yeah.